So we're going to plane this bit of end grain here. Look at that, what a mess. Okay, let's talk about wood. Um, obviously, it's a natural material. Um, you hear people talk about grain. Um, now then, the grain in this piece of wood, as you can see, the stripes going backwards and forwards along the length of it, and on the end, you can, when you feel it, it feels different. Uh, you can see the annular rings in it, and the way I like to think of it is like uh, loads and loads of fibres, if you like. Um, to take this uh, this example, a load of wooden skewers here. Um, if you had all these these wooden skewers laid like that in that direction, they've got lots of strength. If you want to try and split them apart, they're fairly easy to do so. If you want to try and chop all the ends of them, it's all quite hard, and the and the back ends can split out as you as you're trying to work them, and that's effectively what it's like working with wood. So here, lots and lots and lots of strength. Take lots of strength, okay? Take lots of hammer, lots of lots of work. This on the other hand is the, is the off cut from the end of a piece of wood. So effectively it's like if I've chopped off that end. So the grain direction in this, as you can see, is the annular rings there. The grain direction in this goes that way. So the, the fibres, if you like, in this case, would be stood on end, like that. Now what does that do to the strength? Well, quite simply, it hasn't got any. It just splits apart. Okay, so you need to understand how that uh, how wood works, how it uh, how it is built in order to be able to work it properly. And we have to take that into account when we are using a plane and using a chisel. So, let's start off with a plane. First of all, again, remember your tools need to be sharp. When you are planing along the grain, everything is nice and straightforward. Because that's going along with the direction of the fibres. Let's throw a bigger bit in. A bit of floorboard. If I put this bit of floorboard in, this is the end grain. The normal direction of the grain is running up and down like so. If I plane this, look what happens. Look at that. Now all that's just broken off because the direction of the grains. We've got these grains going in this direction and they're not supported at the back so they just split out like that. Now, use some skewers again, skewers like that and all these end ones are not supported as the plane blade goes over and it splits them out. So how do we overcome this problem? How do we make it so that we can plane wood but not have that breakout? Well this is the method. Um, what you need is a bit of sacrificial wood so here's my end that I want to plane, here's my bit of sacrificial wood and all we do is we, we put those two together nice and close, we clamp them in a vise together or whatever holding device you've got nice and close and you make sure that that all tight clamp together. That means now that you can plane that Across. You'll notice when you take the shavings, because it's end grain, they just turn to dust. Because it's like, if you think about those straws, you're just chopping the ends off, little tiny bits at a time. Look at this lot. Okay, so let's have a look at how that's turned out. And there you go. Absolutely perfect, no breakout. Okay, so that's planing. So when you are planing end grain, You've got to make sure that the side where the plane leaves the wood is supported to stop the fibres breaking out. The next thing we need to talk about is chiselling. Again, when you're using a chisel on end grain, 
it needs to be really sharp. So, by sharp, I mean very, very sharp. Um, it's, it is nonsense trying to cut wood with blunt tools. Just imagine trying to do it with a screwdriver. It'll just crush it, make a mess of it. Whereas, with a nice sharp chisel, life gets a lot easier. First rule, all your fingers, your hands, have got to be behind the blade. Okay, you don't want any of this nonsense going off because you'll end up with uh, injuring yourself. Uh, the way I always used to teach people was this hand, which is the one that's not holding this up. First of all, you're going to hold the chisel. If it, this, what we're going to do here is called pairing. Hold the chisel like you know you see people trying to stab people like that. So this is my right hand. I am right-handed, holding it like I'm going to stab somebody. Left hand point. Okay, like this. Then you can put the blade up against your knuckles, wrap that forefinger around, grab it with your thumb like so. Okay, so then you can put your fist on top of the bit of wood that you are going to pair, and you can just push down with a little bit of weight like so. Now the trick to pair in is to take tiny little bits okay and that's why it's very important to have a nice sharp chisel let me just zoom in on that so you can see it okay so finger pointed grab your chisel like so and then tiny tiny shavings press straight down it should be easy it should be easy so you are taking such small bits that it's nice and easy to do. Don't get me wrong, if you try and get, take a great big chunk like that, it doesn't matter how heavy you are. You know, you're using the full width of the blade. You need to take little tiny bits, like so. And then everything's nice and easy. Okay. If your chisel is not sharp enough, you will not get a good edge. You will not get a good finish. So you need to make sure that your tools are nice and sharp and it makes your life that much easier. Okay, so nice, nice clean cut finish. Shavings that just disintegrate. So working with end grain, good sharp tools, both plain and chisels. Look at my videos on how to sharpen chisels and uh, make sure First of all, safety in mind, that's the technique. Hold it like so, put your fist on top of the wood, trim straight down, like so. Okay, 